Hold on to your butts. Just a quick two-fold disclaimer. The first is, this floor can't be done justice by explaining it. This video would be an hour long, so you ought to just run it to get its full effect. Number two, there are some proper body horror scenes and scenes of torture on this floor, and that's not even my homebrew. It's literally as if Chris Perkins just wanted to see how much he could get away with. So again, your discretion is advised. The rain is very muffled as we descend 70 feet into the dark catacombs of Castle Ravenloft. However, it's as if the sounds of screams can be heard carried through the occasional breeze that moves through the still damp air. It's cold, and the brazier that are alight in this room seem to be offering no warmth. This room, aptly named the Brazier Room, is where you come down the stairs from Rahadin's secret staircase in his office. The Brazier is a trap, and quite a good one at that. Two iron statues that are actually iron golems flank the large pit of white flame that will attack if provoked. The Brazier is covered in runestones of multiple colors. If the players take one and put one into the fire, it changes the color and instantly teleports them, and not necessarily to a different point in the castle, but literally all over Barovia. It's not fun when your fighter with the Sun Sword teleports to the starting town, leaving you here, all alone. The Golem fight can be very tough, especially since the PCs have to make two different constitution saves each time the Golems use their Poison Cloud. The PCs will most likely go into the observation room that overlooks a room covered in still brackish water. They can see skeletons hanging from here on racks, chains, and other torture devices. They'll have to get into the torture chamber for a closer look, however. The PCs will next go up the stairs to the right of which they came down along a long hallway. If the PCs aren't careful, they can trigger a trap door that will slide them into a dungeon cell. Now this hallway leads into the catacombs chamber, but we'll get to that in a second. Our PCs want to make sure that the area around the catacombs is clear before they start raiding tombs. They'll step into the dungeon area that is covered in 3 feet of water, K73. Watch out, trap doors in this floor may teleport you into one of the dungeon cells. To avoid getting bogged down, I'll just hit on the important things. In the cells, both north and south, there is some treasure. Electrum and platinum pieces, a potion of heroism, and a plus two intelligent short sword that is lawful good and only a lawful good PC can wield. It conveys emotion and wants to destroy evil. It can cast Crusader's Mantle once per long rest. You may want to save that for Strahd who I suspect is lurking down here somewhere. There is a werewolf named Emil locked in one of these cells. If the players help his clan in another chapter, he'll be friendly and just try to escape the castle. If not, then he'll attack the party when they least suspect it. There is a withered corpse in wizard's robes shackled to the cell wall of one of these cells. Medicine will help the PCs know that his torturer bloodlet him. Slowly draining his blood until he died, reminiscent of the Basil Rathbone Sherlock movie, where Professor Moriarty was going to kill Sherlock by slowly draining his blood. As if that wasn't gruesome enough, however, we come across an upside down, partially withered corpse with its head underwater. Whoever this was, Strahd tortured and killed in a gruesome way. The water in his cell is just at neck level when hanging upside down. Strahd wanted to experiment on this man to see how long he could use his abs to hold himself up. As soon as he relaxes, his whole head is dunked underwater. This kind of torture is particularly rough, because holding your body up in such a fashion can impede breathing, so this soul would have to attempt to hold his breath while performing and holding an inverted toe-touch ab exercise. He'll quickly have to catch his breath as he relaxes and his head is dunked underwater. If he mistimes it, he'll breathe in the water and drown. 
However, he's also going to suffocate by trying to hold himself up. So either way, his last moments of him just trying to hold his breath in different ways without drowning or cutting off soft circulation to his brain is a pretty nasty way to go. The PCs can cut him down and say their last rites, if that's what's desired. The torture chamber is full of mangled corpses, twisted and strung up in various torture devices. It's almost as if their screams of agony can fill your ears, as well as they call out in the trapped afterlife that is limbo in Barovia. You see, when you die in Barovia, you don't get to go to heaven, you don't get to go to hell. You're just stuck. If the PCs move into the chamber to cut the bodies down, some will rise up using the Strahd zombie stats. DMs, please advise. I am a lover of horror gaming, but please know your audience when running this film, and this goes for most of Curse of Strahd. Torture is not something to take lightly, nor is it something to push people in if they're very uncomfortable. Some discomfort is okay in a horror game, but make sure you don't cross any boundaries when describing what bones are broken and what torture implements are inserted where in the bodies. Just be careful. Now the PCs rid the dungeon from any other threats. The PCs will explore the catacombs. There are 40 crypts in here. I will not be going over every one. It's a lot, and it may take an entire session just to go through all of them. Now, for those of you who have played or read the original Ravenloft, you probably won't want to even go through these crypts. But those of you who are completionists and just want to know more lore of Castle Ravenloft, there's a lot to learn here, but just to understand that about almost every crypt, <laughs> someone's going to probably try to attack you. Now, you'll also find not only the really cool lore, but you'll also find some treasure and also Strahd's horse. Uh, nightmare. It's a nightmare. Don't, don't attack it. Don't even attempt to attack it. That's a really bad idea. Especially if you don't want to fight Strahd all the time because he'll just come after you. So don't, don't, don't fight the nightmare. K85 is Sergei's tomb. You know the one Strahd killed because he had the hots for his fiance. It's up to the PCs if they want to disturb this poor fellow's final rest for his plus two armor he wears. K88 is where King Berov and Queen Ravenovia lay sealed. From here, the stained glass windows overlook the village of Barovia. I wouldn't open their tombs. Finally, we get to K86, Strahd's tomb. And for the purposes of this series, that's where we find Strahd with our fortunes. If I really wanted to get into the fight with him, I'd have to dedicate a whole episode, but I'm not. Let's just say that Strahd is in his polished coffin and attacks without remorse. The players have a lot of items to help them and even an ally, but Strahd can still be very tough, especially if you use his summoning abilities and all of his legendary actions to the fullest. Many people homebrew this fight to give Strahd a little bit more HP, and I am one of them. Hoo boy, well, we just explored all of Castle Ravenloft. Again, I can't do it any real justice in the video, especially this floor. You need to read the book and run it, or at least play it, to get the full experience. I did my best. We will have one more episode in this series that has grown larger than we ever imagined it would. The final video on why I believe Curse of Strahd to be so good will be on Death House and my final thoughts on the campaign. Thank you to all of our viewers for sticking around. Thank you very much. And get ready for the finale. This is going to be an exciting one.